Radhika Torval. I am a cornea and cataract consultant in Shaker Eye Hospital. Today I will be talking about a condition called keratoconus. So before we go to the condition proper, I want to uh, discuss about how this condition affects and what part of the eye it affects. So, this is the cut section of the normal eye and I am going to talk about the most front portion of the eye uh, which is a spherical structure like this and something like a glass and it is the most front portion of the eye it is called as cornea so in keratoconus what happens is normally this front portion of the eye is spherical or round in keratoconus, uh, this becomes it has a localized bulge or it becomes conical and that's how its name comes from. Keratoconus means conical cornea in Greek. Okay. So now what comes to our mind is why does it happen? So it happens because of many factors. It's multifactorial. Okay. Uh, one of them is allergy. Okay. Frequent allergies like conjunctivitis or eczema or hay fever, such conditions cause rubbing of the eye, and because of that, this spherical part can develop a localized bulge. Not everyone does eye rubbing, but everyone doesn't get it. So, some people are predisposed, means they have some genetic problem or it is inherited in nature. That is how it can develop. So in keratoconus, the problem is the fibers which form this cornea, they are more elastic in nature and that's how uh, rubbing or inherited predisposition uh, causes this more elastic fibers to uh, have a conical shape and it is thin also. At that part, it is more thin. Because of the elastic nature, it bends there, it becomes conical and more bulged. That area. What are the symptoms that the patient can have when this condition develops? Initially, they might have no symptoms, but then when the condition starts developing, patient develops frequent change of spectacle power, distorted vision, or shadow vision or double vision. Also, some, some patients can describe it like that. These are the symptoms. So if these are the symptoms like frequent change of glass power and all, then consult your ophthalmologist uh, who will do the necessary examination or test to know whether any problem is there in the cornea. Also, patients with keratoconus they have a high cylindrical power in the sense a, sp a spectacle power has two components. One is the spherical power and the other one is the cylindrical power. When the cylindrical power is on the higher side, then we suspect any abnormalities of shape of the cornea. So these are the symptoms. So the ophthalmologist or the cornea specialist who examines uh, will advise necessary tests or scans or we can call it as scans. They are basically uh, we are seeing the shape of the cornea whether it is normal, regular or there is any localized bulge. Also, along with this uh, scan, that uh, these are called as topography tests, uh, the thickness of the cornea is evaluated. So that will give us an idea whether the cylindrical power is normal or it is an abnormal variant due to conditions like keratoconus. So, next, coming to the once the diagnosis is confirmed, coming to the management, what has to be done for this condition? Okay. So, in the initial stages, when it's in the early stages, spectacles or contact lens is an option. Starting with spectacles, if spectacles are able to give good vision, good quality of vision, I would say, rather than actual objective vision, if it is able to give good quality of vision, then spectacles only can be used. 
The next option is contact lens. There are specialized contact lens which are advised for pentoconus. They have a different texture, means they are slightly rigid, but they give good quality of vision to the patient. If the patient is comfortable, then they give good accuracy and quality of vision. That is the next option. These are all in the early stages. Contact lens can be considered in advanced cases also, but there are other lines of treatment in between. The third one is a treatment to stop the progression. Keratoconus, that is this condition, has a tendency to progress. It can progress to a certain age. It depends on each individual. So the earlier the onset of keratoconus, the faster is the progression. So we need to assess whether it is progressing. Frequent change of power itself is an indicator that yes, the hypothalamus problem is progressing. So we have to halt it there and then. So to halt it is a procedure called C3R, which is corneal collagen cross-linking. So in this procedure, what we do is we use vitamin drops and UV light uh, to the eye, and we stop the progression of the Basically, in this procedure, we are trying to strengthen the cornea so that any further bend or thinning does not occur. So, what is the problem if there is progression? If there is progression, then the quality of vision deteriorates. It cannot be brought back to the uh, earlier stages even with any treatment. So, earlier this C3R treatment is done, it is better. We are going to strengthen the cornea and stop the progression. After this also, you need, uh, the patient will have to use contact lens or spectacles to get good amount of uh, clarity of vision. Fourthly, coming to the last uh, line of treatment, that is surgical treatment. This is usually adopted in advanced cases of keratoconus where the above treatments uh, do not give good clarity of vision or there is a central scar or spot which is not giving good vision or the previous treatment that is C3R is not suitable which cannot be done for the patient then the surgical line of treatment that is uh, keratoplasty wherein uh, keratoplasty is done wherein the front portion that is the cornea is replaced with the another donor cornea and it is sutured there. So this uh, is the uh, last line of treatment uh, which will give good quality of vision for advanced cases of keratoconus. So uh, I would like to conclude my talk telling that uh, keratoconus is a very much treatable uh, condition so screening and diagnosis is very important earlier the diagnosis better the treatment and better the prognosis